friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about waxing cheese and how to get started in it. And just know I'm still pretty new at this, but I've done it a few times now. So I have enough experience and made enough mistakes that I feel I can give you a pretty good idea of what to do. It's actually pretty simple, but there are a few things that you want to follow and make sure that you have on hand. Obviously, you're going to want some cheese wax, and I'll go ahead and link to this one down below, but I think there's some other good brands out there. This one is supposed to be made here in the USA, and if I can find another one that, I, that is US-based that I think is just as good, possibly better, I'll go ahead and link to that as well. The one thing about cheese wax is that you can usually get it in like four different colors. One would be clear which to me sounds kind of boring and I think it'd be a little more difficult to see if you've got it well coated your cheese and then red obviously and black and then orange which if your cheese is orange you're gonna have the same problem there so I would suggest either red or black when it comes to that you want to have a thermometer that you keep dedicated you can see this has wax all over I have two of these so I was okay to go ahead and donate this only to the cheese waxing. That way you don't have to worry about cleaning it up every time and trying to get that wax off because it's very difficult. A waxing brush that I'm not gonna bother cleaning out in between is not necessary, but it might be a nice thing to have on hand. But obviously when you go to use it, you'll have to put it in the pot and melt it so that it'll be usable. But I'll explain why this might be handy. Obviously, you're going to need cheese and you're going to need a double boiler. Now, this can be done with just two pots, one that will fit inside the other. I tried that initially, but it was a little bit problematic. So I decided to go ahead and buy myself one of these. And I think I only paid six or seven dollars for this. You want to make sure you get stainless steel. I'm assuming that's all they come in, but just in case. And this way I can have this dedicated pot here and then this pot here I donated to this dedicated cheese making process because you will likely get wax inside of that too. So if you just want to have things that you don't have to worry about cleaning out every time because it is difficult to do, then I suggest just having something that is just for that. So the pot I already had, and then I went ahead and bought this, and I'll go ahead and link to it down below. The size you get is going to depend on what you need. So I did some measuring to make sure I had the right size for the size that I like to cut my cheese, which is this size right here, so that it'll fit down in there. And But you can go bigger than this. So the link I'll give you, I believe, has several different sizes. I, wa I went with, I think it's the smallest one. But obviously, if you're going to be waxing bigger chunks of cheese, you're going to need to figure out something. I saw a video of a guy where he had a big cheese wheel and he waxed the whole thing. So he used a big shallow pan for his wax when he did that. And then some options is to have some stick-on labels like I have here. These I get for free with my skin cream tins. That's just an option. You don't have to get some stick-on labels, but they are nice. As you can see, I just was able to stick this on there and it sticks great to the wax. The first time I did it I didn't actually think it was gonna stick to the wax I so I dipped it in the wax and put it on there and this is what it looked like you can just barely read it and it I made it worse by brushing over it with the brush and so that made it even harder to read so the stick on's nicer but some people just cut their cheese if they need to know which cheese it is because I currently have two different ones I have cheddar and I have pepper jack then some people will just cut it in different shapes they might have more square shapes like this for cheddar cheese and then maybe wedge shapes for another type of cheese so it's just going to depend on you but make sure at some, somewhere along the way you got to find a way to label it so the box you're putting it in when it's done you're going to want to label it so you know how old the cheese is as you can see here i did put the date on this right down there because i currently have three different batches that are aging that i've done at three different times and by the way this back here this is for another video I hope to get shot today. It's going to be about using dairy powder. So it's related to cheese because here's my, this is my home dried cheese powder right here. But uh, it's related, but it's different. Anyway, back to this. So what you're going to want to do then is decide what size shape do you want your cheese. Now, and, and if you, it matters to you ounces, I don't really care how big they are. These are actually the biggest ones I've cut yet and they're ranging they're not even all the same. The one is 10 ounces and the biggest one is just over 12 ounces. So I just kind of go by feel how it looks. I just want to make sure it's the right size 
to be able to dip down into my little pot right here. So that size is up to you. Now you're going to want to start this at least a day ahead of time. I start it now two days ahead of time. And the reason for that is you need time, you need at least a good day for your cheese to dry. So all the excess water comes out of the cheese as well as being able to get some of the excess fat out and then blotting that dry. So what I do is I put these on a rack that I use. It's my, it's my off-grid dehydrating rack. It's got multi-purposes. And so what I do is I put the cheese on that and I put a cloth underneath. You can use paper towels, but since I'm always all about trying to use things that I can recycle, and I have the, the cotton cloth anyway to use on my different racks for dehydrating, I put a cloth underneath it so it's something to absorb all that stuff that's coming out of the cheese. And I put a cloth over the top to keep it clean as it's sitting there, especially since I put it next to the wood stove and a lot of ash can get on it there. So I put a cloth over the top and I leave it for a full day. Then the next day, I take my vinegar right here. I have some homemade vinegar and you want to make sure it's a good acidic vinegar that you, you're getting a 3.5 if you're talking about your homemade vinegar, a 3.5 pH on it, which is about 5% acidity. Uh, you can do the same thing with store-bought vinegar if you'd prefer. I go ahead and take a little silicone brush. You can actually dip the cheese into the vinegar, like have a bowl and put it in that way. I've seen people do it that way. I decided to go ahead and brush it on. And this video is going to be kind of lame because I was trying to hold the camera and brush it on there. But making sure you get all the way around the cheese, all sides of the cheese. Now other videos I saw, people said they let it dry for an hour. I find I found it best to go ahead and let it dry for another full day. That's just my personal preference to make sure it was fully dry. Oh, and before you do that, make sure before you put the vinegar on there, make sure you blot off some of that excess oil first, then put the vinegar on. Then when you're ready to get started in the waxing process, you may need to blot the excess oils off the cheese again. Then what you want to do is you, obviously you're going to put water in your bottom pan and you're going to let it heat up and have your wax in there. And this is important. Now I didn't, on this third time that I did this, what I didn't make sure, because well, I really wasn't certain, is to make sure I had enough wax in the pan when I went to dip the cheese. So anyway, you want to have your, your thermometer in there. You want your wax to get to about 200 degrees. You can go a little higher. You don't want it so hot it's going to melt the cheese when you go to dip it in there, but you're not supposed to leave it in there too long. So then what you do is you dip the cheese, and you'll see me make a lot of mistakes because I'm trying to remember this stuff as I'm shooting the video. But you, you dip the cheese in first, then you want to stand it up on the unwaxed end to cool while you do your other ones. And otherwise, if you put it onto your wax paper, which I forgot to say, make sure you have some parchment or wax paper to set it on. You put it on there with the wax side down. When you go to lift it off, that wax is going to pull off the cheese. That's why you want to want the freshly waxed side facing up. So as you watch these video clips, you'll see me. I kept making that mistake. I was so scatterbrained that day. Then by the time you finish your other pieces, you go back and then you do the same thing to the other side. Now this was when I found out my cheese wax was not deep enough. I found out for sure. And so what I had to do was turn the camera off, add more wax, and then get it heated up again and to finish the process. And so then you're going to do that a total of four times because you want a total of two layers of wax. You don't want more than that. It can get too brittle if you get, if you put three layers of wax. So two layers is going to be plenty right there, but you definitely want it more than one. And you can tell by the way it looks if you've double waxed it or not, but especially if you set it, when you go to set it down, you put the fresh wax side up, then you'll know when you pick it up what side it is, what end it is you still need to wax. But you can also tell by the color it's going to be a lot more thin on the single waxed end. Then just let it cool. Now here's a place where the brush can come in handy, and I did end up needing it this time because I had so many things go wrong in this last one when I finally went to record it. It just seemed like everything was going wrong. And so I had some spots that needed to be touched up. That's where your brush comes in handy. So then I took the brush, and that's why some of these, they don't look as smooth as my last batch because I had to use the brush to kind of go over some of the thinner areas that didn't fully get covered. So the other mistake I made, 
First I had the wax paper too far away and I was dripping all over the place so I pulled it closer but because I had it on the stove then what happened was the waxed paper started warming up and the wax started melting so even when I stood the the cheese up the on the correct side the wax from the cheese and the wax from the paper melted together so when I lifted it up, it pulled that wax off the cheese. I did it that way because I wanted the wax paper right close to me on the right hand side because it's easier for me, especially with the way I was shooting the video. However, it'd be better to do, like I should have done it on this burner here and had the wax paper here. That's what I did before. But I wanted to use my smaller burner instead of the big burners because I didn't want to waste the energy on this pot. Well, that was a mistake that I won't make again. Next time it's going to happen on this burner. Put the wax paper here like I did the time before because I didn't have that issue because this is the counter is going to stay cool unlike the stovetop. So that was what was happening there. So make sure you don't make that mistake. I was a little frustrated because it's like, great, I'm trying to shoot this video and everything's going wrong. But on the other hand, it was a good thing because now I know to tell you, make sure you keep the your wax paper that you're going to put the cheese on to cool in a place that's going to stay cool and not get warmed up otherwise you're going to have to re-wax that cheese because i ended up having to redo the ends of a couple of these because of that fact so i had to just kind of dip it to cover that end and so in some places the cheese ends up being triple and quadruple wax which is not what i wanted it'll be fine because it's not the whole block but still uh, it was a little frustrating. Didn't turn out near as nice as my last batch. So my second batch I did was the one that turned out best. Like I said, you can label your cheese or not. So I just used my Sharpie, wrote on the labels, and then just stuck it on there. And it sticks really good to that wax. And then what I do is I just store it in a box. And I make sure I mark the outside of the box so I know where, where the cheese is. And you want to try to store it so the cheese isn't touching each other. So we stand them up on end and then put them in the box that way. And what I'm going to do with this is put a... I already have some cheese in there. I'm in this one box. I'm going to take that cheese out, put this cheese in on the bottom since it's going to be the newest. And then I'm going to put a piece of cardboard over the top of that and then stack the older cheese on top of that. And then that will give me, because the box is deep enough for me to do that. Now, one of the reasons you want to allow your cheese to dry for at least a 24 hour period is so that a lot of that water will come out of the cheese. Otherwise, what will happen is in storage, that water will start leaching out and fill up the wax. And so when you go to open up, you'll have a lot of water coming out of there. And you don't want that. You want as much water out of there as possible before you do the waxing process. So I'm glad I watched Cat's Cradle's video on that, which I'll go ahead and link to down below because you can learn some more from here. From her, she shows you how you can even recycle the wax by washing it off and just putting it back in the pot to melt down again, which is what I plan on doing once I go finally dig into that first batch of cheese to see what I think about it. And then of course, make Make sure that you're storing it in a cool dry place no you do not need to refrigerate it or freeze it the whole idea of waxing the cheese is to make it shelf stable that's the point but you still want to keep it in a fairly cool area so you want to have a pantry a root cellar or something that you keep at pretty low temperatures oh and then I do put the lid on the pan when it's in storage so that you could cover it with plastic or something else if you want just to keep dirt and anything from dust lint stuff from getting in the pot where i store it back there in the pantry and then obviously the next time i need to go wax cheese i'm going to be cutting some off of this to add to this because i used up quite a bit in fact when i added more wax in there to begin with to do to finish waxing this out it still wasn't quite enough as i'm sure you noticed in the videos i had to do a little bit of tilting and moving it around to make sure that it was overlapping because that's the thing is when you go to dip it in there you want the cheese to overlap you don't want it just coming to the edge you want it to actually overlap so that you can get a good seal as far as shelf life i'm not really sure the length of time i'll try to find see if i can find out more about that and put it here but it should last for a very long time and if anybody else who's been waxing their cheese for a while has done this and, and how long have you had it in storage and all that, please share that information down below so people can learn more about that there. And as I 
said, I'll, sh I'll also link to Cat's Cradle's video. It's pretty old, but at least you can uh, see how she did hers. And she also, I think, linked to the wax that she got from a U.S.-based company there. And obviously, if you're outside of the U.S., just try to find waxes made in your own country. And yes, I for this was one of the things I wanted to say. It does have to be a special cheese wax, not beeswax. That sounds great because we know it's all natural, but cheese wax is, spe is a special kind of wax that stays a little bit softer. It's a little bit more malleable than certain than beeswax is. So you can see, even though this is just thick with wax, I can actually bend this brush. So it is kind of got a special quality and that's why you need that special cheese wax. And it is kind of expensive. And that's why it's a great idea to, all, to make sure that you're re washing it and reusing it, which again, I will certainly be doing. And if you're interested in the video I did a couple months ago now at least about other ways to store cheese for long term, I'll link to that video down below. But in that one, I didn't talk about the dehydrating your own cheese. So I'll link to the this and that video I did on that. But I'll also have a more in-depth video on that coming out down the road once I do more experimenting with the cheese here than what I've done so far. So I can give you more ideas on how best to use it. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.